And it's, I would imagine a, um, some players have an international break and, and take a bit of, uh, of time off. You're obviously pretty busy and a full international day, but that, that's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it's always good, you know, um, to go away with international is it's an honour. And um, yeah, making my debut for, for my country was also special. Yeah. Do you get nervous in those moments or is it just something that you think, right, I'm, I, I've been trying to do this for so long, let's just go out there and enjoy it? You know what, I think... Um, there are moments there, it's, it's what I live for, really. You know, I strive off them. And yeah, as, as you said, it's something that's been awaiting for a long time. And, you know, finally to get that to get that debut was, was special for for me and also family. Yeah. Did you get anybody to go out and, and watch the match with the people in the, the stands for you? No, nah, because I didn't start. So I told them, you know, there's no point you coming if I don't start. So, yeah, but yeah. I'm sure they'll get plenty of other opportunities. And, and is it that if you want to play well, I'd imagine you've got to have a, a few of those nerves before you're going out, but you just, you, you've just you got to control it. It's got to be on the right line, not too much or too little. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, with, with the nerves, you've got to be able to control your nerves. Um, sometimes they can, they, can, they can do you in a positive way because, you know, you get on the pitch and you want to express yourself and you have that bit of fire about you going into the game. So, yeah, as you said, you can't really get too too nervous and... Never too high, never too low, yeah. really. And and you're still so young, and I'm sure the lows that you will want and, and go on to achieve in the game. But when you think about the last few years and, and how far you've come, do, do you ever sort of step back and think that's that's pretty impressive? Yeah, and no, because human nature naturally you always want more. So, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a type of guy that's I always want expect more from myself, and you know, every single day I'm always trying to better myself. So. In terms of that, yeah, sometimes I do, and you've also sometimes got to be grateful, you know, because if you if you constantly just want more and more and more, you never really look at, you know, the now, as in what people say. Yeah, because you've got to enjoy it as well at some point, haven't you? Because the idea of playing, so I imagine when you were kicking a ball around as a kid, it's because you enjoyed doing it. Yeah, exactly. You know, as a kid, you, there's no there's no stress, there's no, you don't have to, to do anything apart from enjoy your football. So, yeah, as you said, yeah. So, but as I say, so much more still to, to go on to achieve. Are you one, are you a goal setter? It's like, this, this is where I want to get to, or is it just, let's get better every day and, and see where I end up? No, for sure, I have my goals. Obviously, you know, I think if I didn't have my goals, it'd be something to worry about. You know, I, I want to play, I want to be the best. I want to play at the, the highest level. And, you know, I'm confident I will achieve that in the, in the near future. But as of now, you have to look at, you know, every day, just trying to improve of, just trying to improve every day on the pitch. I guess you've been here now, what is it, the best part, almost a, certainly a month, six weeks, something like that. Are you feeling a little bit more settled? Like, you know, you've got yourself sorted out with, with home and, and your teammates and all those kind of things? Yeah, for sure. I thought the, boy, the lads have made me feel at home from the first week. But obviously, as time's gone on, and now I feel settled, you know, I'm, I've moved here and everything's good. So now I feel ready. I was ready, obviously, yeah. a few weeks ago, but... Now I just feel settled and at home and ready to just literally focus on my football. Yeah. Because when you come to a, a new team, you're always full of optimism about, I'm sure that I'll get a chance. But actually, you've had plenty of game time since arriving. So that's got to give you confidence that the manager's brought you in because he sees you as a big part of this team going forward. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, some guys, it takes a while for them to, to, to get used to it and adapt. Uh, I said when I first came here, I want to get straight into it without sounding too confident or but I back myself to come in straight away and not look out of out of place in a way so I think I have done that but there's also so much room for improvement yeah. and, and we've, I think we've seen that obviously some of the individual stuff you've done but the link up play particularly you and, and Alex Scott have, have done it but I've seen it with other players as well where you, you, you're starting to get on that same wavelength so you're not having to think about it you're just doing it yeah and I think there's still more to come you know um especially with me and Scott, Ian, and, you know, the other lads. But, yeah, it's just like getting used to the players. You know, it's, it's a big uh, it's a big adaption from, obviously, where I was to, to now. And it's just about getting used to the players and, yeah, doing it on the, on the match day. Because yeah, every team has its own sort of style and, and you can sort of broadly fit into different categories. And, and City probably play a slightly different way, certainly, to, to the way Wickham have been playing. Yeah, exactly. You know, here we, we're a high-energy team. As we was there, to be fair, counter-attacking, 
progressive football. I think we play more here, certainly play more and and look to get the ball in wide areas. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's a slight slight change to to Wickham, yeah, for sure. And back at home this weekend, and you know against a, a Reading team that have been struggling a little bit, is it is the next thing you want to get see your name on the score sheet and get a goal, or is, are you just as happy if, if it's your cross that ends up in the back of the net of somebody else? I'm just as happy as me assisting to me scoring, but for sure I'm hungry for my first. You know, I, I'm a player that scores goals and gets assists, so you know my start here in terms of stats hasn't been the greatest, <clears throat> but. I'm not worried because I know if I get myself in the right uh, positions, I will, I will be scoring. So, yeah. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Uh, so, how have you um, settled into life in, in the city? Have you had a chance to explore, explore the area too much yet? Not really. Not really. I don't think uh, f my life is literally just training and, and, and resting, getting ready for the next day. So, I, w I haven't really explored much. I went out a few times to eat and that, but nothing. Nothing too crazy now. Yeah. I was I was having a look at the, the footballing background before before this interview, and it's it's pretty interesting for the academies at, at Spurs and, and and Norwich, and then you went down to Woodford Town. Can you just tell me about how that kind of move came about? And uh... um, obviously, I was in the academy set up from like eight years old, and then terminated my deal at Norwich, and then found myself you know without a club for a couple months. I had a friend of mine that had a, his dad. Um, was at Woodford and told me come just keep fit whilst another club you know brings you in and that's what I've done I went there for a couple of months played and yeah and then Covid hit and then in the summer I just I went to Wickham on a trial and kicked on from there really How did that spell at Woodford Town kind of improve you as a player I imagine the physicality of that of that league compared to being in the academies was quite an eye opener for you Yeah for sure you know being in an academy your whole life is you never really look at non-league and think we think non-league is just, you know the bottom of the barrel like you're like you don't want to go there but I found myself there and to be fair yeah it did it did it did do me well um we see the physicality you know little things that you 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 learn in like in the lower leagues like even for example picking up second balls which in academy setup you don't get taught that but you know in the men's game that they're, they're the important things winning your duels so yeah, not for sure. It did. It did help me get to where I am now. Yeah, and when you moved to to Wickham, that was in the. It was initially the B team, wasn't it? But then you got promoted to the first team, in in the Championship. How much do you think your game has developed in that season, the Championship, com compared to compared to now? Um, I think it's developed quite a lot. Um, but as I said, there's always more room for improvement. The Champ is completely different to League One. I think Champ is more of a it's more patterned than League One. League One's more of just a fight. And so, yeah, no, I, I think <clears throat> since my first season in the champ, I have improved as a player, but I think there's so much more to come. You, you mentioned the room, room for improvement. What areas of the game would you are you looking to improve? Uh, um, specifically? Mixing up my game, uh, knowing when to combine and when to, to get past players on a 1v1. I think attacking crosses can be better with my my finishing from crosses you know uh, here at city we we get we get we get balls down the line and we like to flash balls across and that's where some of my goals are going to come but whereas at wickham it was more flick ons and mistakes and sec and like drop down so it's it's still adapting to you know the city way and and just studying ways to to get myself scoring as much goals as i can yeah i think when i've kind of heard interviews from Gareth and, and, and Nigel and even when you're speaking yourself your ambition kind of stands out really where does that kind of drive drive come from I you? think it's been from from the beginning really um, you know I come from a family with a strong strong belief really you know a, b a big drive they want me to do so well so I think I take that into myself every day you know with the support I get from from my family it just drives me to want to be the best because they've put so much time into me you know chasing me and, and going everywhere for me to follow to chase my dreams so i think it's just repaying them and i feel yeah just that relentlessness of every day just wanting to improve yeah well family obviously means a lot to you how i mean how proud were they 
of you making your making your international day. Yeah, it's special for them. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was buzzing. There was buzzing. There was buzzing. So, what does um your game? Is there any players that you kind of watched over the years and you've prided your game on that you've that you've kind of studied in particular? Um, Hazard when he was at Chelsea. Um, Coutinho when he was at Liverpool. I like Neymar. Yeah, players players like this also. Number tens, the games change really. Like um, I used to like Ozil as a player, even though he's a lefty. Um, yeah, Santi Cazorla was also a good player. Yeah, Talk, talking about the the number ten role there, you I mean you featured in there, you featured out on the left, probably predominantly a bit more this this season. Which area of the field do you, do you prefer, and, and which is your more natural natural position? A year ago, I would have said number ten because I've played number ten my whole life. Um, in the championship season with Wickham, I was playing number ten in the f- in the first year in League One. I was predominantly in the on, in the ten, and then lo- this year really I went started playing out wide, and I found myself, you know, doing well in the one v one, one v one duels. So I quite enjoyed staying on the left, but I think it depends on the game. I think there for sure my two best preferred positions. I can do a job on the right also, maybe deeper role, but in the like centre mid but I don't know I don't know what to choose from I like I used to say 10 but now I probably like both of them just just as much do you get a bit more freedom out on the out on the, le- on the left yeah that, I think that's why I've kind of enjoyed it over the past and to be fair I've been more effective on the left if you look at my stats on the left I've scored um, uh, 75% of my goals so yeah, I, for sure, there's more freedom on the left because you, you're isolated in the one v ones, and you, you know, you ca- I'm coming into my right and shooting, or I'm going line and, and hitting off my left. So yeah, thanks for your time. Thank you. Hi, Anish. Hi. Uh, what's it like to be a player that the Bristol City fans have already really warmed to? You've obviously got a chant already, and you know, if you come off the bench, they're always really kind of excited to see you come on. That must be a really nice feeling. Yeah, for sure. I think the fans have been brilliant ever since I've. I've come in and I've, I've just got, a, I feel like I've got way more to show them. I don't think I've, I think I've hit the ground running, but I think I've got so much more uh, to offer and for them for them to see. Uh, Alex got, uh, mentioned a few weeks back that when he first saw you in training, he kind of could see a lot of similarities between you and him, the way you play. I just wondered, do you agree with that? The way you kind of see the game and approach the game? You yeah, take? for sure. I think. Scotty and I has uh, have similarities, um, also differences. Um, yeah, I saw I saw what he said, and uh, yeah, we we do have similarities. To be fair, Scotty is a top player, so yeah, yeah. And uh, coming up this weekend, Reading, uh, a side that will probably sit back, so you'll probably have a lot of the ball. Do you feel like you you can be one of the key men in games like that because of your kind of technical ability to get in between the lines? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I go into games confident. I know Redden are going to be a tough opposition. You know, we've just come off the back of two losses, so it's, we have to put it right on Saturday, really. And um, yeah, looking forward to Saturday. Yeah, uh, your old boss uh, Gareth Ainsworth spoke to you this morning. How delighted he was for you to receive that call up. You said he uh, he gave you a, a call last week before. Just wondered how nice that was, and what what did he say? Just congratulations. Yeah, he called me and just said uh, that he's so happy for me and, you know, it's all I ever wanted, even when I was at Wickham. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, he was, he, he kick-started my career. So, you know, without him, I wouldn't be here where I am today. So, yeah, I'm rooting for him uh, constantly. Obviously, he's at QPR now, so I'm hoping he gets results. But at the same time, we've got them at the end of the season, so I want to score against them. Uh, and he also said that he believes you can get to the Premier League. I know you're very ambitious. That must be really another positive thing to hear from from ex coach. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, he believes in me a lot, and um, I also, without being, you know, too arrogant, I believe in myself a lot too, and I, I like the pressure. I like wanting to be. I like people saying that about me because then I can, you know, really go on 